So I have a tiny issue. I have a tiny issue. Obviously, when I was in Ireland, someone kindly pointed out that my sprocket and chain was on their way out. Which it's it's the correct. It is on its way out. It needs changing. I've not changed it since I bought the bike. I bought the bike second hand. So you know what? I think it needs a little bit of TLC. Fair play. So I've not been riding the bike. I'll be honest, just because one, I've been too busy to get it sorted, and two, I rang up a few garages. I rang up a few garages and they said like the chain sprocket, I'm looking at like 120 plus like labour charges, that was like a main dealership. So I was just like, oh my god, the bill's gonna be like between 250 and 300. Like maintenance costs aren't something I factored into owning a motorbike. Now I did phone up like a few like mechanics that I've used before that I really like, but they're in like the next two cities over and they're about to go on annual leave. So I'm kind of like stumped having to pay like 300 pounds to fix my, my my bike to get back on the road and it's summer it's like it's a heat wave like i want to be on the road riding right but it didn't really sit well with me spending 300 pounds to fix my bike i'm gonna be honest i i was not um i didn't want to do it it's so much money so obviously the logical conclusion is to spend 300 pounds on parts and do it myself because you know that's what that's what a normal human being would do because somehow spending 300 pounds on parts for me to do myself versus you spending 300 pounds at a garage to do the exact same job somehow it's better <laughs> delivery one has arrived one of eight to fix my bike so I, uh, I got some paddock stands because it would make it easier. So they've arrived today. Just had a, another delivery and uh, it feels spiky. So I think it's my rear sprocket. So that's going to go on the bundle. So uh, parcel number three arrived. <laughs> Wait a minute, this isn't what I ordered. This is an X ring. I'm really annoyed right now because I went on eBay and I purchased an O-ring chain. And unfortunately, what has arrived, if don't know if you can see, is an X ring. And the invoice says X ring, but the listing says O-ring. So I rang up the shop and I said, hey, I purchased an O-ring chain and you shipped me an X ring. And he's like, we don't stock O-rings. So I was like, okay, but I purchased an O-ring. So, and you've sent me something that's not described. And he started saying like, X-rings are better, you should just use the X-ring. And I was like, no, no. The answer is yes. I was the kind of girl that ran with scissors as a child. Safety tip there. You're not gonna get stabbed if they're pointing the way. I'm really like, I 
there's like holes. What are these for? What are they for? What is going on with this thing? Why? I looked at all the pictures and it looks right and I don't know what is going on. Okay, so I've built this one, no issues, no problem at all, it's simple. But where does this go? Does it... Does it... I don't... It doesn't seem to like click on anywhere. Hmm. Not a clue. That can go in the box. So the rest of the tools that I need to do the job arrived. The first thing that arrived this week was a very cheap chain breaker kit. Now, I ordered a cheap one because someone recommended it on YouTube and they said they've had absolutely no issues with it. So I was just like, ah, uh, why not? It was like a toss up between like, I don't know, spending like 20 quid on a kit or spending like 50 quid. And I thought, well, I might never want to do this again. So I'll go for the cheap tools first. But the first thing that I did when this arrived was I opened it and um, all the parts went absolutely everywhere. So that just, I don't know if it's a complete set now or if I'm going to find like a screw rolling around my living room at some point. But that's, that's one of the things. The other thing that arrived this week um, was basically just some bigger sockets because uh, I just, I didn't have any. Again, I'm just going for cheap tools because I don't know if I ever want to have a go at doing this again. Um, so I didn't want to waste too much money just in case. Then the other thing, obviously I've ranted and raved about this, um, was this chain. <laughs> uh, I lost the momentum to return it, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I was like really annoyed about the wrong one being shipped. And then as the week progressed, I got inherently lazier and lazier about returning it. And now I'm probably just gonna fit it to my bike. So, uh, <laughs> I fully intended to return it and um, I ran out of steam, so, you know. I also have um, some head lift pins. I didn't know what size I needed, so I just got a whole variety of them. Um, and I'm just going to hope that one fits. And then obviously I have the, the sprockets. But there's one thing that I'm particularly excited about. I'm so excited about this, I'm going to have to show you because I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay, so there's one more thing that I purchased online and it's obviously a necessity and I wouldn't just buy this thing on a whim. I definitely didn't buy it for absolutely no reason whatsoever, but it's, you know, it's totally for, for doing my motorcycle maintenance and I'm, I'm really the most excited about this, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna show you, hang on a second. I feel so cool right now. Uh, this was clearly a necessity. Uh, because it's all about the outfit, let's be realistic. I'm not gonna pretend. I'm not gonna pretend that it's not about the outfit, so um I'm gonna I'm gonna go open a mechanic shop now and uh I'm gonna go tell people they know nothing about their bikes. <laughs> Isn't this the cutest thing ever though? I love it so much. Oh, it's a little bit big, but uh <laughs> I'm never taking this off. Oh, and then yeah, before I forget, I got this for my knees because um, concrete hurts when you're kneeling down for a long time. So uh, I'm getting old. <laughs> So the only thing left to do was to start getting stuck in. I have a Pyramid Plastics rear fender fitted to my SP650. So the first port of call was to rip that thing off. I've taken my rear wheel off before and the fender, and I usually just remove all the bolts and then balance the fender on the wheel. After this, I decided to rip the left hand pillie peg off and also loosen the cover up covering up the front sprocket. And this folks is where I ran into disaster number one. I rounded out one of the bolts. I hit my first road bump. <laughs> the screw that I need to get out to get to the sprocket is carved out and it's the exact same issue that I did last time. So I'm gonna go buy an extractor kit because I do need one. This is like the third time this issue's cropped up. <sighs> <laughs> So 
somehow I don't think that's safe. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so we finally managed to get the bolts out. My other neighbour, turns out he's an aero engineer and he removed them for me with the, the bolt extraction kit. So um, this is the, uh, the mess that it's created. This is how many drill bits we went through because they kept breaking. And then most of all, <laughs> the most shocking thing of all is the amount of dirt in my bike. like caked on oh my god it's so gross <laughs> So I finally managed to remove the cover off my front sprocket. However, the washer keeping the nut in place was completely warped around it, meaning I couldn't get the socket to grip onto the nut. I spent the next 30 minutes trying to flatten it out with various tools until the socket could neatly fit on it. I could do my own mechanics on my mobile. Like YouTube had me fully convinced I could do this. YouTube did me dirty. YouTube has done me dirty. This is so much more difficult than it looked. Like this is... <sighs> YouTube had me fully believing this would be easy. And it's not. <laughs> Trying to get my front sprocket off, which was an absolute nightmare in itself, like the breaker bar did not work. I had like neighbours helping me, I've had like two neighbours come and help me so far, and that thing wasn't going. I then had a friend come round with an impact wrench who managed to just like pop pop, done. Like that was it, I was just like, oh, two days of struggling, and it just like, it just literally came off with an impact wrench. And now, while I was trying to get the front sprocket nut off, the internet said to hold down the rear brake. And I did this, and then I noticed my rear brake was scraping against the disc. So I looked, those brakes, pads, they're, they're shot. So now I have a third task added onto the list. So after I change the chain and sprocket, and after I change my oil, I now have to change my brake pads. So, I am learning very quickly about the real reason you don't want to do your bike maintenance is because you're definitely more particular and one job is starting to multiply into many jobs. So what was supposed to save me a lot of money has turned into a very large money pit. Let's hope that this is the last order 
I need to do with goddamn that's everything I need. This looks really small though. Is this supposed to be that small? I feel like mine's bigger on the bike. <laughs> so the, the washer that I needed has now finally arrived. Thank god. Uh, now I can just basically start getting my bike back together. That cost me five quid. Like the tiny bit of metal. And I probably could have put the, the old one on but I just thought, well, I might as well change it. So the other one was like a bit bent and a bit battered from basically doing its job. So I thought, you know what, for the sake of a fiver, I might as well just throw a brand new one on. I don't even know if it's necessary or anything like that, but I mean, replacing parts can never be a bad thing. So here we are. <laughs> and hopefully tonight is the night that I have a working bike. I hit a roadblock and basically I can't get the pistons on the brake calipers to go back like they're not going back I had all the force in the world and they're not budging checked out online it's maybe the case that there's too much brake fluid in the brake lines and um, that's what someone suggested which happens apparently when your brake discs have worn out too much which would make sense given how <laughs> worn out mine are so now in order to proceed, I need to go 
get brake fluid and drain the fluid from my brakes so that I can push the pistons back so that I can get the rear wheel on so that I can connect the chain. I think I'm going to have a breakdown. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a breakdown. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I did want to do all of this in one video, I'll be honest. I didn't want to do multiple mechanical videos, um, but it's looking like I don't have a choice because this is turning into a bigger job than I anticipated. But you know what, at least everything's going to be done before I go for my MOT at Christmas to be fair, and at least everything will be done before I go for my giant trip that's coming up. So as annoying as it is, it is what it is, and there's not really much I can do about it. So I'm going to leave that here for this week, <laughs> and I'm sure you guys can enjoy me having a mental breakdown next Sunday. Um, I'm going to go pick up some brake fluid now, so yeah, a very grumpy Safi Sprocket signing off until next week.